Welcome, residents, to the Dr. DC Podcast. My name is producer Richard, and across from me is the doctor himself. Hello. Each week we talk about the weird and wonderful world of DC world, feeling questions from listeners like you. Rumba! <laughs> In the jungle! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> uh, we got a review. We sure did. Fucking right. Yeah. But uh, well, you said it like as total. if we like made it up. You're like, we sure did. Yeah, I know. That we got a sound, real that review made it sound fake, from we, a real person. We, we, this is actually one of four that we got from one dedicated resident. Oh. So Mwah. we'll be reading them, you know, one at a time on episodes as we go forward. But we're currently, because of this resident, we're sitting at around 80 right now. Oh. So we have like taken a leap forward Holy shit. towards our goals. We're almost, we're going to get to that. 100 so that we can quickly surpass it and go to 200. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> then we get a dedicated supernatural podcast. Did you get to... I haven't watched anything further than the Christmas episode. Oh yet. my god, I don't even know. But I saw the episode... Before. I mean that Christmas I saw episode? the episode before it with Gordon. G- loved it. Crazy shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I watched that Christmas episode. Very Holy. fun. I, I love that fun. couple. The couple is so good. Yeah, yeah, they were really good. I feel like I've seen that, like, the guy. Oh, he's been in a ton of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He feels like someone that's just, like, always a day player on TV shows. 100%. I would have seen him a million times. Oh, yeah. I mean, to have that, like, 50s sort of vibe all the time, I mean, yeah. Yeah. He's been in lots of stuff. But you are so close to one of the best episodes of the whole show. Whoop. Really looking forward to you getting there. Yeah, it's been good. So 200, and we get fucking Supernatural podcast. so come up. But remember, at 100 reviews, the Lord of the Lord of the Rings miniseries, same format, new content, and, and it's halfway, another place where this guy can shine. And it's halfway to 200, so let's get to there. <laughs> uh, so we've got a review, five-star review. That's number 77 yep. uh, on Podbean. Look at that. Whole new fucking place you can get reviews to us. Yeah, flick on over to Podbean and give us a review. <laughs> Uh, I've heard that the uh, Podbean actually doesn't even exist. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've never found Podbean. Yeah. <laughs> My wife says that that's where she listens to her podcast, but I've <laughs> I've literally never found Podbean. Yeah, I, I I think it's I think it's a it's a it's a it's a conspiracy by big media. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just I just slam a bunch of other podcast apps <laughs> around Podbean, but it never quite hit where Podbean is. <laughs> I uh, usually just take my iPod and hit it in people's faces. But <laughs> uh, from Red Burr, uh, who goes on to say, "This is such a five star podcast. <laughs> this is such five star podcast." Oh, I love it. <laughs> from Red Burr. <gasps> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! If you like DC crude humor, <gasps> how did di- if not? This is the highest name of one cool. time. <laughs> Don't. Count the previous four minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and questions being answered. This is it. Wow. Thank you, Redbird. Oh. You are most premium podcast listener. Yes, very good. Yes. I love all the podcast episodes. Yes, we 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 we, we take your pod uh, uh machine and put in a podcast. <laughs> Super great. Supreme leader Putin always finds Podbean. Yeah. <laughs> First try. <laughs> Some say that he created Podbean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that one was number 77 total. We're at uh, about 80 now. Wow. Uh, so keep them coming. They could be in the form of comments on some apps that don't have a review feature. That's fine. Comment. And remember what I said, uh, if you weren't listening or if you skipped the uh, ending part, which I'm sure a lot of you do, the last episode, uh, if you if you, if you you post us oh, yeah. on a subreddit, uh, 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 anywhere on subreddit, and you mentioned five stars yeah. somewhere in there, uh, put, put a link to our podcast, yeah. something like that, to an episode that you like, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, uh, and you give us five stars in that, my friends, 
that counts as two reviews. That's true. Yeah, yeah. If if you if you if you big us up on a subreddit that is not our own, yes. Uh, but more importantly, yeah, then uh, that counts as two reviews. Two fucking reviews. Yeah. So you might, you you want to jump on that you for bang sure. for your buck there. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna come. <laughs> uh, we've got some news. Uh, a couple big, big pieces of news this week. Something happened uh, against all odds. Well, let's. We'll wait. Hold on. We'll, we'll get there. The first piece: Ruby Rose exits yeah. Batwoman role to be recast. Yeah, yeah. So she just finished the first season. I mean, the sort of abbreviated first yeah. season, like all the shows had to, just because of the COVID shutdown. And yes. Uh, but yeah, she's leaving the role. I think you know and. Lots of people have had snarky remarks about this. The report is that it's just she just found it too overgrueling. It's a grueling schedule. I working mean, working on TV like that is. Ex- I mean, it's very easy to be like, oh, you fucking actor, but like they're long days. If you're it's number a lot one, of work, especially on a show like that, she's doing a lot of stunt work. If, there's a lot of training. If you're number one on the call sheet on a show like that, where you're basically in every single scene, you're doing like 13 hour days basically every day, yeah. strapped into like hooks and like having to be physically still pretty and, physically active. And because like, it's it's so constant, and yeah. because you know the, the way the TV seasons work, a lot of those actors have to turn down stuff for yeah. movies or things like that if it can't accommodate their schedule so i think it's reasonable for her to have been like wow do you know what that, that's way bigger way more than i bargained on i got other stuff I but she also to. like it's not like she has she's had a easy ride even like outside of filming it like yeah. getting like the harassment that she got coming into this yes, show yeah, there's that like too, yeah. I, I, I don't i mean the uh, the show definitely hasn't been sort of well received in a lot of uh, in a lot of yeah i think it and- definitely picked up Post crisis, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. But yeah, I'm, you know, maybe off to a sort of middling start. Uh, but, yeah. So yeah, so basically they have to recast Batwoman for season two. So you know that's too bad. I I actually thought Ruby Rose was was a good. Uh, did I say Catwoman? The uh, Batwoman. Yeah. They so they you know I, I thought she was good in that role. I um, think that she's she's yeah. she's well casted in that role. I don't know if if she's been well film directed and written for that role well that's i think fair i think and that's been my criticisms. sort of issues it's not with her it. fault yeah i think that that yeah she fits the spot and i've saw i saw her in orange of the new black it's not like she's a bad actress um but yeah that it just has not been sort of like the, all the, the cards are stacked against her in a lot of ways yeah uh, so I mean, and also, surprise. who knows if that's actually the reason she's thinking? It's just the thing that I had read, but it's a thing that I've been hearing too. Uh, but yeah, so they, there'll be a new Batwoman for next season for sure. I mean, and which for is, that crossover that they're going to do with uh, Superman and Lois. And, I'm very curious to see yeah. what that is, and maybe that'll bring some new direction for that show too. I don't know, like how that will change things. Yeah, yeah, we'll find out. I, you know, it's funny in this day and age, especially with things like the MCU and that. Yeah, we have a tendency to like we forget that like people used to just swap out rolls all the time and it's you just true blew past it yeah yeah like the mom changes halfway through fresh prince oh yeah that's uh, right like, yeah like, that just that's just a thing and then because of these things where it was supposed to be a like super continuity yeah, yeah. then it's like well how do we explain it yeah. or like what or like weird crap like that and it used to just be like well you don't explain it, like just it's, it's the same person else. use it's your the imagination same way james bond's been operating for 60 years yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. use your imagination <laughs> yeah so you know, I, 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 it's not like a, I don't see this as a, oh my God, it's off the rails, but I, it is too bad that she's leaving. I do hope that it's a bit of a reset for that show, uh, cause yeah. there's a lot about it that I'm not really in love with. So yeah. I'm hoping that there's a reason for me to start coming back to it now. I want more, I hesitate to use the word, but supernatural elements. <sighs> oh yeah. We all want more supernatural yeah. for sure. So here's my pitch. Sam and Dean. Yeah. <laughs> <Gotham City. laughs> uh, Look, he's, they're already in the CW. It's uh, Batwoman. And they're Sam already and Dean going up against Deacon Blackfire. <laughs> they're already in the in the in the Arrowverse. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I feel like it's just a matter of time, and it's a supernatural sort of element to that show. Yeah. I think it all makes a lot of sense. I'm having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Your eyes just glazed over so fully. <laughs> I've never been more satisfied in my life. Uh, next piece of news. Uh, this is the one we've been hearing. About. I I. Hold on. I can't. I just... Justice League Snyder Cut officially coming to HBO Max in 2021. You got you got your wish, Doctor. You've been posting it on the internet for years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, really, I've been going after all the cucks that said it, yeah. w- it wouldn't happen. No. <laughs> 
Yeah, so Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is its title, yeah. will basically HBO is putting up twenty million dollars to finish. A, well, twenty to thirty, essentially his yeah. version of it. Yeah. But they might like slightly edit it so that it's maybe a mini series, couple of episodes. I uh, I had heard that instead of it just being the full length of the movie, like they might do like. Not a movie cut, but like the, I think there's four or five hours. Oh, it's going to be a show stuff, for so. sure. Yeah, it's um, going to be a mini series. Uh, from what I've heard, is that like his first cut? I mean, that that his sort of very initial cut when all of this sort of started happening yeah. right before sort of everything happened with his daughter was a cut that he had had with like a lot of like drawn in like animatics and stuff like yeah. that, and it was around four to five hours. Yeah, long. so where something like that is happening, they're going to finish it off. It's coming to HBO Max 2021 somehow. Now. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to watch it. Oh, yeah. I'm wickedly curious about it. Super. Because I liked Man of Steel and I liked BVS. And I just I just want to know what it would have been. You like I'm you, just you I, like Zack Snyder I, and I do. his takes. I I yeah, I don't agree with everything, but like I I liked his movies. I don't dislike them. I super hate his fans. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> like Holy shit. There's, so there was a huge part of me that was like, if it does exist, I hope it never sees the light of day because these bastards are like seeing this as some sort of vindication of their horrible, horrible methods. What was it that I said to you the other day? I was like, I hope that it comes out and there's just like the like basically no difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said it'd be funny if it was four hours long, but exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally, it's just some like extra. Or somehow worse. Yeah. yeah. That, oh, both, that would be both so. Both you and Matthew Poulter, previous guest of the pod. Uh, said basically the exact same thing to me <laughs> on the day that this was announced. Um, it would be good. But I, what I'm excited ab about, yeah. be, the things that we know of yeah. what would have been his version of Justice League, really cyborg heavy. It was essentially like a cyborg origin movie. Yeah. So really excited because I love Ray Fisher and he just got like cut to pieces in the, what, mean, what, the theatrical cut. Also, that's how he became cyborg. Oh, my God. <laughs> Cut my son into pieces. pieces. This I'll is my last box. It's a technology mechanics. Oh, this is my last cyborg. cyborg. <laughs> there we go. So computers I'm mechanics. <laughs> Got a laser gun and he says a lot of boo. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like this Ray Fisher, so I'm excited cyborg. to see more of that. There was also going to be more of Flash. Like, Iris was supposed to be in there. Uh, more stuff with Flash. There was supposed to be stuff with Volko and Mira, like, in there that would have been a bit more yeah, for Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. Just in general, this would have... there. It, I mean, I can also imagine... It's going to work better as a miniseries, because if this thing had come out as a movie, I know exactly how I would have felt about it. It was the same way of Man of Steel and BVS. I love them, but like, holy shit, move it. Like, let's get yeah. this thing going. Um, but the idea of that like deeper uh, deeper lore world building, Dark Side is supposed to be in it. They've already um, uh, uh, confirmed the actor. Yeah, I mean, there's... There's stuff I am excited about. And again, I've been curious about this the whole time. It just, it became for me more of a vendetta against the people that wanted it so badly and, and like all their fucking harassing, abusive shit. But like, I'm definitely going to watch it. Do you think there'll be some lantern action in there? I think so. Yeah. I think so. There's a, yeah. I mean, Probably some sort of time travel resolution to that thing we got at BVS where Barry just pops into one scene. Yeah. It says well, Lois is the key and then it never gets picked up again. I mean, that's the thing. This, I mean, th it's true from everything I've heard. This is supposed to be like a very different movie. Like yeah. they very much turned it into something completely different. Yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 it It'll actually kind of be like a new movie, which is kind of exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of funny because, I mean, we I mean we talk about it all the time. The yeah. continuity doesn't really matter that much. Just flow with it. Just roll with it. But there's a part of me that's like, I wonder if this is going to make things a little fluid, like for movies. Like you know, we already yeah, know in yeah. Aquaman they mentioned you beat Steppenwolf. That's a very clear reference to the events yeah. of Justice League. But I wonder if then, like, this comes out and then they make, someone makes a reference to something that happens in this. And we just sort of have this sort of fluid idea of, like, whatever happened in that, like, in-universe period of time where the plot of Justice League happens is a little amorphous. We've got stuff we know happened before it and stuff we know happened after it. And that period of time, you can reference stuff or not reference stuff, but it's, like, 
we'll just sort of bleed the continuities together a little bit. Yeah, just like hands are everywhere. Who knows who's touching who? Yeah. Just keep it fluid. <laughs> There was a lot of mud. A, a, a guy could have slipped in there. Who would have known? What is that from? The office. It's, yeah, cr- yeah, it's a yeah. Creed oh, thing. Creed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. I know what this yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> it was the 70s. There was a lot of mud. A guy could have slipped there. How, how, how would one do know? Um, yes. But, yeah. I uh, <laughs> I assume you're also going to watch this. We're yeah, not, not going to watch yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. I, I think I had a lot of issues with Justice League. So I'm like... Yeah. But I'm like, it, it, it's as if you like took one of those like Lego sets and then you like lost the instructions and just sort of built whatever you wanted to. <laughs> and I'm like, right. I'm kind of curious to see what it would have been in with the constructions. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you lost it's some not, of the pieces. It's not and, to say that it's going to be better necessarily. I mean, be, I sort of think, think it, it will, but I, I, we can't guarantee that. Yeah. Nor can we guarantee that it's like a richer or better interpretation. Although, again, I suspect it is. Yeah. But it'll just be so different that it's like it's too fascinating not it's, to look at. It's interesting to think of like the 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 DC and like like the DC EU being like like a like a multiverse now. Like we're gonna get like <laughs> yeah, like this is the other story that happened within the same sort of year. It's kind of weird. Like yeah, it's yeah, it's it's funny. I also think this. They must be so worried about people signing up for HBO Max. The fact that this is happening at all, I like. I was like, I can't. I mean, I can't believe it's. I think that I can't believe it's actually happening. Well, I I'm not that surprised, and I, and I won't be that surprised if we get a lot more stuff like this because right now, basically, with with COVID in quarantining, a lot of content that's supposed to be developed is yeah. sort of out of fucked right now. So yeah. they're good. I mean, since so much of it is already done, this is cheaper than making a movie. And well, that's what I mean, right? Like technically this was kind of the yeah. perfect time to do it. It's like, Oh, we need to get more content out there. Yeah. All of a bunch of our schedules got pushed back. How are we going to fill this gap in? You're seeing people do it. And that's how swamp thing got picked up. Uh, that's true. The idea that like more I mean, stuff like this yeah. could happen is not out of the realm of possibilities. That is also true. That's yeah. A, a perspective. I haven't thought I hadn't thought of the suicides. David Erica. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the one that you mentioned to me was you want the Lord and Miller kind yeah. of solo. Fuck, so bad. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, because that movie obviously is... released the butthole cut of cats. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll we'll do a new commentary track if that gets released. I mean, I know how that is appealing that is to you. Yeah, I'll Warner show, Brothers I'll, or whatever. I'll show up in Universal. You'll be, you'll be like, we won't even record. We'll have tacos. It'll be fun. And then you'll just be like, here's a <laughs> mic. We're watching Butthole Cut. And I'm like, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm going to go to your house. Have like a what, For those wonderful- of you that don't know what we're talking about, Richard uh, pranked me into <laughs> doing a documentary track about cats oh. uh, for last week's double dose oh god it, it's like the most decadent chocolate cake you've ever had yeah so if you if you want to hear how angry that made me <laughs> go over to the patreon <laughs> sign up it's at least two and a half hours of you being angry which is great yeah oh my god well and then i was angry when i came home too my oh yeah your your wife started texting me being like i just i i, I love you so much you're the best and then she was like, by the way, also, I like the thing it you made, said about It cats. made her so happy how angry I was about it. She was, yeah. I th- She's I, still talking to other people about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think your wife fell deeper in love with me. And it's wonderful. I, you know. I mean, you're the one who wanted it. Oh. Fucking insult. <laughs> no, you're mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh there ladies and gentlemen there's plenty of me to go around <laughs> hands going everywhere <laughs> it's all fluid wow we circled back look at that i'm gonna come uh is there any other uh can you think of any other like cuts you wish like were released well i mean it's not a cut because it never got filmed but like it's sort of like that thing with colin trevorrow's proposed rise yeah. of skywalker script Oh, right. That script that's gone. I've around. heard, but I think I remember where I heard it was. Somebody it's suggested so much better. Someone had suggested or it was be called the, Duel of the Fates. That's what it was. Someone suggested taking that. That Disney should take that script and just animate it. That would be awesome. Yeah. Or you know like, they've done this with uh, some like uh, screen uh, like teleplay things that never made it to air. Make a comic. Oh yeah. Make a graphic novel. Or of even it, just do a live reading. Anything like that. Yeah. That uh, Colin Trevorrow's episode nine Duel of the Fates. I, yeah. Obviously, it never got shot. I but just. I would. I would love to see that one. I still want the George Miller Justice League. 
Oh yeah, I mean, again, we're we're veering into things that were not shot at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if we're, I still if we could just go back and get wish list things. Yeah, Justice League Mortal. That's up I've there. been I've been on the fucking like Army Hammer Batman train for so long. I just want Batman in a fucking suit. Yeah, pour him into his <laughs> easy now. Yeah, just like a glass of milk, white and viscous. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, so disgusting. Um. Yeah, we're just talking about uh, Army Hammer. I don't know what you mean. Uh. Oh God, when there's two of them in the fucking social network, easy now. Get me. I just... feel so bad for the other person in that scene. Why? Because it's not him filmed twice. They filmed it with another actor. Oh really? And they were going to just play them as twins, and then they got to like they got to post production, and they were like. No, it, we should digitally put wow. Army Hammer's face and voice over this other actor, oh. and they just erased this guy from the movie. I had no idea. Yeah. That's crazy. They were just gonna like just be like, "Ah, eh, they're twins," but they were just two diff- two actors. And then they were like, "No, we're gonna make them actual twins." But they had filmed it all, so this wow. guy just got digitally replaced by Army Hammer. Holy shit! I had no yeah. idea. I mean, if I was gonna get replaced yeah. by anybody, yeah. So I want the I want the non Army Hammer social network cut. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah that you heard it here this, this is where this is where it starts yeah give the no no army cut <laughs> the one army cut yeah the bowl cut <laughs> it's like the opposite of an army haircut yeah, yeah that's good. uh all right we should get into this week's theme that's right uh this was the one picked by our Golden Age subscribers, who I love to death because there are there's subscribers on Patreon, but and they are a, a valuable uh, uh, asset, support uh, network, great fans, very but... dedicated. But the dark age <laughs> of comics, the fucking worst age of comics, <laughs> of all of them. Some 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 may say this is the dark age of podcasts. <laughs> this episode, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um. No, I mean there there is lots of fun stuff to talk about in the Dark Age. Dark Age is 1984 to 1998, roughly. Yeah, uh, but it's 1984. So it covers immediately pre-crisis. It covers uh, everything there, basically up almost to the the turn of the millennium, yeah. um, which was a lot of the like extreme oh, kind of yeah. like era of stuff. Lobo, uh, your Lobos. Your Lobos. If you're reading Marvel, it's Liefeld Town, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, even in... Uh, Is that where we get even, the even fucking DC, mutant yeah. Spider-Man shit? Oh, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah X-Men I, in their classic yellow outfits. Uh, I'm not familiar enough with Marvel to know that, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the 90s is your death of Superman. It's Bane breaking Batman's back. It's Hal Jordan becomes Parallax. It's, you know, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of, you get like a literal team called Extreme Justice. Yes. And stuff like that. Oh, what was that character that we had read from the the tone? Oh, I think that one was. It's like X something. That was an X-Men character. Yeah. Um, And he had. He could boil your blood, but his outfit was all blades so yes. that he could make you bleed and then boil your blood. That's right. Or some shit like that. I can't remember his name. Nobody was, makes yeah, me bleed my own it blood. It was X something, yeah. X going to give it to you. Um, <gasps> so, yes, we're talking about the Dark Age. The Dark Age of comics. Once again, that's 1984 to 1998, roughly. Wow. Why is it called the Dark Age? Well, because it's metal and dark. Because it was all that, like, being edgy and, yes. like, all that kind of shit. Okay, that you know, makes sense. Essentially. All right. I uh, should call it the grunge age. Jeremy <laughs> Spoker. Yeah, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's but go. he unleashed the Nightwing. <laughs> Let's go into Facebook. Go to the face and the book. Go to the Facebook. Go to the face and the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next question or the old first question. Wow. Wow. The first question was so bad, we're not even going to mention it. No, that's Next right. Question. At a point. Uh, <laughs> first question comes from... We've only just been done. Dan, dun, dan, <laughs> oh, that's dun. good. That's good. Yeah. 
uh, who asks, can you discuss the impracticalities of the Nightfall Batsuit? <laughs> yeah. So this era is where you also get like, you know, Kelly Jones drawing, uh, drawing Batman. That's where you get like the longest ears on the Batsuit ever and the sort of like impossible, yes. impossibly long cape. And you also get that like inventing muscles kind yes, of thing. Yes, classic nineties uh very, uh, very thing, yeah. thing. I can't stand that. Uh I can't either. And yet it has managed to carve out a very like it's a very sort of feels like like a warm, comfortable nostalgia. It's a thing, thing that we still see today. I mean You know, like there's there's something to it. Uh and so that <laughs> so during nightfall Bane breaks Batman's back, and oh. Batman chooses a successor. That he doesn't pick Dick Grayson. Um, Thanks for helping me move, Batman. Oh, I broke my back. Yeah. <laughs> Pivot. Uh, <laughs> Pivot. Pivot. <laughs> that picture online of Ross Al Cruel <laughs> fucking killed me. Um, so, oh, now you jump over me, Batman. <laughs> Oh, you broke my back. Wow. Um, <laughs> Batman chooses a successor. Yeah. He doesn't pick Dick Grayson. He picks this guy, Jean-Paul Valley, okay. uh, who becomes this very unstable version of Batman. And the suit that he wears is this like fully armored up. It's got like an Iron Man light in the front. Yes. It's got like weapons and it's like metal and shit like that. Yeah. It's a crazy fucking bat suit i don't know that it's necessarily the most impractical because there are many versions of batman that you don an armor for some purposes i think the most impractical thing about it is like all the horns and like the shape of things i don't yes. the armor itself is necessarily impractical but it's like it's the 90s aesthetic of the armor like <laughs> It's uh, it's pretty wild looking. It's I would say if you're going to try and list impracticalities, it's also very colorful, which is sort of not Batman's gig. No. But maybe the armor makes up for that because it doesn't matter if he's more of a moving target. or Because like he's such a fucking beast that it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's like it's a suit that like enhances strength and all this kind of stuff. We see new versions of it now with Jean-Paul Valley as Azrael. Mm -hmm. But uh yeah, I mean, it's a pretty wild blue and yellow suit. It's got lights and weapons, and it might have had jets in it. Jesus it, Christ. It, 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 it could do a few things, but it's a pretty, like, brutal suit. It's not designed, let's say, to be 100% non-lethal. <laughs> Let, let's say that. Yeah. It's not like Batman's usual MO, which yeah, was the whole point of that story. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but what's the there? What's the really crazy outfit he has? The one that like is is like powered by his body, like by his, his life like, force. Yeah, that's the Hellbat. Suit. Yeah, that's the one that lets him go like toe to toe with Dark Side. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he wears that to go to Apocalypse to get Damien's body back. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go to the next question from the most interesting resident. Um. Rolling Sabers. No, it oh. isn't. Andrew Delgado. And you were so on for so many Stephen months. Stephen Marin Almagro. No, it's... I don't know who these people are. It's Andrew Delgado. Fuck you. Also, I gotta pick a song that isn't just Jeremy. I gotta try and vary it up as we go here. <laughs> it's just it's an easy one to it's go so to. It's so easy to call up. It's Andrew Delgado, baby. <laughs> Is that to the evolution? Yeah. <laughs> We're on Facebook. Here's a question. <laughs> it's the first mammal to wear pants. <laughs> it's a great song. Wow, I fucking love that song. That I, video fucking ruled. That really oh, got me into that. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, I really. I really miss when they used to do those like crazy like ant, like Japanimation style yeah. like videos. Yeah, corn had. Like some crazy music videos. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Delgado asks, what is the weirdest, edgiest thing from the Dark Age that has ended up surviving in modern comics? I mean, partly, I, I would initially say the fucking crazy muscles. That still really exists. It's, it's, it's not as prevalent as it used to be, but it's definitely still around. I, I, I mean, certainly the idea of 
the insane minute definition of all muscles, but I would say nowadays it's more accurate. It's not like, like back then. It was, no just like, it was just like draw another lump. Yeah, it's, it's like that's a muscle. Boom, there's a muscle. Yeah, it was like twelve packs. Bicep uh, on your bicep, baby. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's it's it was crazy. The leg yeah. definition was ridiculous. Yeah, I I mean I would agree in terms of the overt uh, definition in the body. I the think sh- sort of shredded physique. Yeah. and stuff in- like that. Somehow inside of a suit. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Let's see. What is the, I mean, the craziest thing that's, I mean, if we're just talking about continuity that never got reset or something, it's shit like major force cramming Alex DeWitt into a refrigerator. Does that like, still, is that still continuity? It though? is. Yeah. yeah. He just folds her in half, and puts her in a refrigerator. Yeah. Not ideal. You know, uh, that brought up a whole lot of issues. Uh, I mean, it, there's continuity pieces yeah. that are like batshit crazy that never got corrected. And that I would say is among them. Yeah. Uh oh god. It's that's a very very interesting question. Um craziest thing. I mean this is crazy in a good way. We're going to be talking a lot about stuff that is easy to shit on, but like a thing that fits right in the middle of this dark age. And I think there's a question. So we'll talk about it more later, but is that like Baja, like funny yeah. comedy justice league? Yeah. And that is still continuity. And it's probably still one of the best justice league. Runs. Wow. Really? I mean, it's its own thing, right? Like if you like action punch like Superman throwing a moon, yeah, yeah. you're not going to like it, but it's, I mean, it's great. It's like a weird, like, little ruby uh, in this era of comics. I mean, that's definitely in there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could say there's weird crap from, like, Doom Patrol or Animal Man. I think those books. I mean, the, but those are also those. just, I don't and know. Th- if- and those ones, like, some of that stuff has stuck. Um, I don't know if that stuff is necessarily like due to the time it was written and more of just right. like just the caliber of the writing. Yeah. And the product of, of the, the, the characters and books. Yeah. I mean I, the, but the friendship between like blue beetle and booster gold. Yeah. Like something like that, you know, I mean, booster gold himself created in like 1986 or 1987. Yeah. I mean, that's maybe one of the best new character introductions. And one of the like ones yeah. that has done relatively the best in the in the modern era for Uh, sure i mean that's definitely something that's stuck around yeah absolutely yeah all right right, let's leave facebook and head on over to twitter twitter i do i is there more like is there a lot of like booster gold comic books that are still just like written he doesn't have his own series right now but he had uh so he had a series right when he was created yeah Lots of appearances in Justice League International, so he was big in that book, in that during that Boaha era. He had his own series right after Infinite Crisis, and that ran, I can't remember how many issues, but that ran for a few years. And then he's, he's often a supporting character. He's got lots of appearances in yeah. books that are not Booster Gold books, but I think he only has two actual series that were him. He led the Justice League International in the New 52 version of the team. Uh, like he shows up a lot, but he's only had two solo series. Nice. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Um, the next question comes from Raging G. My knife serrated. Raging G. I like to masturbate it. <laughs> I hope those aren't related. Hold on. Didn't mean for that to rhyme. I got right. another one. Raging G, I'm bathed in fire. Raging G, I'm a constant crier. <laughs> <laughs> that one's better. I love that one. Yeah, that's a keeper. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I'm a constant crier. <laughs> that is it. Just nonstop. <laughs> I love that one. That was a very good one. Yeah, there we go. I fixed that. What makes this Dark Age and not New 52... Because of uh, because a lot of people said the New Fifty Two was so dark as well, and even DC mentioned in Doomsday Clock that Manhattan created a dark version of the universe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that the criticism of the New Fifty Two was its dark tone. 
I think the criticism of the new 52 was that it was so inconsistent <laughs> the continuity. what they kept and what they threw yeah. out, right? You know, that, that whole generation of original Titans, like other than Nightwing, just didn't exist. Yeah. Or like like what they were doing with Arsenal was weird and stuff like that. They didn't have Donna Troy or Tempest or Omen. Yeah, it was Manchester United, United. We, we, we really were in to root for. I don't care that much about Arsenal. Don't ever let my dad hear you say that. <laughs> my dad is hardcore Gunners man. Oh, is he? Loves the Gunners. Um, I'm just, I'm just a bigger fan of Manchester United. That's that's my team. Really, M- Michael Caine? Yes. Even though you're from London, yeah. could root for Chelsea or I spit on Chelsea. Oh my god! I uh, spit on your grave. Mr. Wayne. <laughs> um, sorry, what was the question? Oh, right, right. I don't, I don't know that that. W- I, I know what he means. In Doomsday Clock, and I think that's more of just a general reference to the, the idea of what Doomsday Clock was trying to address was that they got rid of the the sort of Justice Society generation and that Titans generation basically when they did the New Fifty Two, and they're still making the point that like it, the world is a little less bright without those things in them, without those relationships and, and that sort of history of mentorship and all that kind of stuff. They're making a general point about that. And it's like, there are dark comics, not in the dark age. It's not that they all happened during this time, but it's also like I just said with the justice league international, it's not also that this era was only dark. But it's called the Dark Age just because that's the preponderance of what was happening was about it was about like the goal was almost to kill or break every hero. Yeah. Everyone had to like have this big like upending in their story. Uh, and it happened to almost everyone during that time. And so that's the that, I think that's where the nomenclature comes from. Plus, it's all based on the influence of things like the Dark Knight Returns, which like literally you're invoking the word dark by sort of mentioning yeah. that and stuff like that. You know, like all of that sort of general trend is sort of what marks that era. It's not to say there aren't dark comics after that, but when you get into the 2000s, you're starting to get your Jeff Johns sort of influence. You're getting the nostalgia thing. People are starting to come back. We're undoing things. We get a multiverse back in the 2000s. We get, you know, we get Hal Jordan and Barry back. Like, you know, we get Barry back and Barry's mom is now dead. That's yeah. dark, but we get Barry back. It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, it's uh, it's not 100% one thing or the other. But, yeah, I think it's more that the goal of a lot of things in this era was how extreme can we be? Can we, sh- like, what? how much gore can we show? Like that Lobo Christmas special yes. shit like that, you know? Like... It was it was almost it was um being edgy for edgy's sake as opposed to being like really rooted in story. That's not to say everything was like that, of course, but I think if you're just general trends, that tracks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh all right, let's go to the next question and oh, what's that sound? Uh it was the cry of a donkey. It must be morning. That's right, the next question comes from Braydon. Ah, uh, sunset. Uh, or sunrise. That's one. Yeah. Uh, sunrise. Sunset. Sunrise. Sunset. You know that grunge classic, Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> uh, would you say that Batman in the comics got darker, which led to Tim Burton's Batman? Or the opposite. Well, I mean, if we're tracking like when the order that things came out, yeah. the Keaton Batman is after things like Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, possibly after Killing Joke. I, I, I'm always a little fuzzy on some dates, but like those, Burton's Batman is definitely inspired by Frank Miller, a hundred percent. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's not quite as brutal. But it's definitely as brooding. Yes. Like all of those sort of dark emotional things and like oh, that's the city doesn't even believe he exists. Like all this kind of shit. Like totally. that's very I mean, it's also very golden age Batman, but that's sort of the stuff that Miller was initially riffing on. Yeah. It it definitely goes that way. Now, in turn, 
what Burton influenced was the animated series and some things that came after it. Like, everything influences something else. So it's not that Burton's Batman didn't have an effect on comics or things like that, because we know it did. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't, like, the progenitor of all of those sort of dark versions of Batman. It wasn't the thing that stopped Batman from being silly. Batman hadn't been silly in comics for, like, over a decade at that point. Because in the 70s, when, uh, like, Neil Adams uh, is on it, we get Rachel Ghoul as a new character. We're starting to take things more seriously. The Joker's brought back. He's a bit more homicidal. We're in that sort of Bronze Age where the comics code is crumbling and sort of falling by the wayside. So the 70s for Batman are pretty, like, epic, pretty grim. And then Frank Miller comes in and he goes, what if it was worse? And that was revolutionary. Yeah. And that inspired things like Batman in 89. But, like, we weren't – it wasn't just, like, a hard pivot from Adam West Batman to Keaton. Uh, there, there was a whole, like, 15, 20 years of comics that were moving that direction anyway. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. Let's go to the next question. Uh, all right. This comes from <gasps> your analog. <laughs> That's right. Dorkaholics. Oh, Dorkaholics. <gasps> Worm Talk has a ring of power made by Sauron. The ring of power is made by Sauron. Not Saruman. Saruman. Sauron makes the rings of power. Hmm. In conjunction with Celebrimbor, the ring lord. Of course, at that time, he's going by Anatar, uh, the gift giver. I thought uh, uh, Sauron was wizard just like Gandalf. No, and Sa- Sa- Saruman is the white wizard. Yes. Sauron is the great eye. Yes, I know. But I, I, I thought that there was like a fan theory that Saruman made a ring. Who gives a shit about fan theory? That's not that's not canon. When you're drunk, who knows? Torcaholics. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! It's all I'm fucking just. just. What does Torcaholics ask? Torcaholics uh, asks. Um, <laughs> oh my god! I lost my place. Uh. Dorkaholics. This is all good vamping. Yeah. We've been doing this for three years. Yeah, I'm all... And that experience is really showing. Dorkaholics asked, what stood out during the Dark Age? In abundance of darkness, did humor or lighthearted stories exist and stand out? Were they ignored or non-existent? Right. So, I mean, I talked about it before, but that whole Justice League International uh, era with Blue Beetle... Booster Gold, Guy Gardner, Fire and Ice, uh, Martian Manhunter. Uh, That is such like, uh, it's such a little coral reef of comedy in an ocean of dark during that time. It's, uh, and it's not like ingenuine. Like it's legitimately funny and heartwarming. Disingenuous me? Yeah. What did I say? (laughs) Ingenuine. That's also a word. Is it? Yes. Okay. Fucking idiot. <laughs> Loser. Dork. Dorkaholic. <laughs> Knowing words. Dorkaholic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's such a great little bit of heartwarming stories. It's, yeah. a, you know, about friendship and about romance and about silliness and Marshall Manhunter's addicted to Chacos. And, like, yes. it's, it, it is great. It sets up stuff that goes way darker than it ever was. Yeah. But it's a it's a beautiful little piece of comedy in there. And of course, issue to issue, moment to moment, always moments of comedy through uh through this era. But, you know, a lot of darkness, Jason Todd biting it. Uh you know, uh Batman yeah. backbroken, Superman dead. Uh, you know, why, yeah, yeah, Superman's dead. Oh, yeah. it in my head. I mean, yeah, but I mean, to be honest, Superman never made any money, saving the world from Solomon Grundy. 
Uh, sometimes I can smell the world will never see another man like him. Mm-hmm. Different song. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Copy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Coffee yeah. spoons. Who put the bat in the bat cave? You did, baby. You did. <laughs> That's an album no one had. I did, though. I bought that album. The really? one where he, like, every song's in his falsetto. We're on such a tangent here, but <laughs> man, Crash Test Dummies. That's, that's I mean, I went li- through a phase. Ca- I, Crash Test Dummies is a little in my wheelhouse, too. I, I, I 100% went through a huge phase. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, moment to moment, there are other sort of light points. I would argue that as as grungy and 90s-y as Liefeld's work can be, his Hawk and Dove series is pretty fun. Yeah. Like, I mean, it also has people getting fucking tortured and shit, but like, it's the, the relationship is kind of fun. Like, I think you can make an argument for Hawk and Dove being among the lighter of those series and things like that. Like, it's not, it's not all doom and gloom, but definitely a high point is that JLI series. If you're looking for like, what was the best fun thing from this yeah, era? It's that hands sure. down, no competition. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, next question come from Ryan Putney on ground and bow to glorious leader. Yes, it's very not cumbersome joke. Finest joke we ever produced. Yes, you cannot find better joke than this. This joke is ten jokes tall. If you were to take this joke and put in your podcast, it very funny. Yes, it would be great. You, you, then you'd go home and you'd have a, uh, you'd have. Some 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 crazy fries. Yeah, fry, uh, uh, fries gravy. with gravy and cheese. There's no name for this dish. Then you put in your mouth. You put in these fries in your mouth. Yes, you put in the put in. How dare you? Take him away. No! Inquisitor! What does Ryan ask? Uh, Ryan asks, could you give a dark storyline shout out for each member of the traditional seven members of the Justice League during this time? That's all right. Let's okay. Let's see what I can do here. He's cracking his neck. (laughs) Uh, So a couple of obvious ones. Death of Superman. Push a little Superman and make him come up. Make him come up. Push a little Superman and make him come up. (laughs) Wow. Get a little ween in there. That was good. Yeah. Um, uh, you get Nightfall, of course. Batman breaks his back. I mean, yeah, that's a classic story. Uh, a thing that we even got to see in Nolan Batman. Yeah, yeah. Your body. Yes. <laughs> what will make fun? You know, it's really funny. So we got, uh, we had to get my dog a muzzle because he keeps eating shit everywhere he goes. So oh, we, really? Yeah, yeah. Because he just kept getting surgeries because he kept eating stuff and getting them stuck in his stomach. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we had to get him a muzzle, but it's like this cage that goes over his face. Oh, that's right. He looks like Hannibal Lecter. So, but I keep going like, oh, daddy, I want some dog treats. <laughs> or he like... Or he went to have, like, he was going to eat, and it was like... I wondered what I'd lick first. Yeah. My balls? Oh, your butthole. Uh, There's a lot you can do with peanut butter. Um, oh, my God. I liked that. Or, like, or uh, with with dinner, would you like your dog food with a nice Chianti? Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, I would say... Uh, so, that's Superman, Batman. Yeah. Obviously, we have uh, Emerald Twilight for Green Lantern, where Hal Jordan becomes Sounds Parallax. like a weaker than songs, but yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he wipes out the core, becomes Parallax. Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman, you have War of the Gods, uh, which is a bunch of pantheons fighting, and Wonder Woman dies and comes back in that series. Wow. Um, for Flash, I guess you get uh, Return of Barry Allen, which... So cash and checks all over Barry, this. <laughs> he's cash and checks all over the country. Uh, Barry Allen dies in Crisis on Infinite Earths. And so then Wally becomes the Flash. And then partway through Wally's run, Barry comes back. And you're like, oh, Barry's back. And then you're like, Barry's not really acting like Barry. 
and you realize that it's Eobard Thawne who has given himself surgery to look like Barry. He's like obsessed with Barry. He wants to be the Flash. Oh, wow. Goes to the Flash Museum, realizes he's destined to become the Flash's arch enemy, snaps, you know, and this is basically like a retconned origin story for him. While he beats him, they wipe his memory. They send him back to the future. And then canonically, his reverse Flash's actual first appearance happens after that story. Oh, wow. Because it's time travel and all that kind of that's stuff. That's crazy. Uh, but that's a that's a pretty crazy story. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, Aquaman goes through the whole thing where he like he fights Charybdis and he gets his hand eaten by piranhas and he gets the hook hand and uh, that sort of time and tide and through Peter David's run, he's sort of like, like an outcast from Atlantis. He's yeah, he's missing his hand. Uh, he goes through some shit. Oh. <laughs> The dolphin family that raised him is murdered. Jeez. Uh, some shit like that. Um, uh, that's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, Aquaman. Martian, Martian Manhunter. Manhunter during this time is hanging out with the Justice League International. Generally, pretty fun times, but he does fight. He does have this big fight with Despero, and he has to like use up his like one Martian, like, love power basically this thing called the mayavana where that traps uh basically puts someone in their perfect uh like telepathic hallucination yeah. like their perfect dream f- forever you're supposed to in martian culture give it to the one you love the most but he has to use it against his arch enemy to like trap him it's him swimming in chacos i don't know that that counts well no no no. it's he traps despero in oh. his like so for despero he's destroying the martian man oh, over okay. and over uh, I don't know that that's that's not nearly as dark as some of the other stories got, but like that, I mean, it's sort of sad. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I think that's it for the main seven. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. Uh, holy shit! And the next question comes from John Wickham. Oh my god! I can we cut this bit out of the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, of course. When I was driving over here, yeah. I definitely hit a dog. What? It may have been John Wick. Oh, no. Uh, oh, I, you're in trouble. I haven't told the full story. So you got to make sure you cut this out. No, no, of course. I may have backed over and hit it again. <laughs> you're fucked. You're, now, you're in trouble now. Well, it was looking at me. And well, then it deserved it. Yeah. You know the rules. Yeah. If it looks, it, if it, looks it me, gets squished. It gets, goes under the car. Yeah, uh, John Wickham. If, it sees, if he looks in your eyes, it's got to die. John Wickham didn't see me, but I have changed my plates. I've scrubbed out the tires. Oh, one small problem. The most important thing is that he cannot hear this part of the podcast. No, no, that's no problem. Okay. Yeah, it's no problem. Should I have not have just sent him a text saying that you were here? Is that a problem? Oh God, Baba Yaga. <laughs> You just sent me a text being like, hey, is there any murderers here? And then before, even before yeah. you answered that, I said, oh, yeah, there's this guy who hates yeah. dogs here. Baba Yaga Ham, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously. Uh, John Wick, wow, it's ridiculous, the set of things that just happened there. Um, <laughs> but you'll never know because I did it out. Yeah. <laughs> John Wickham uh, asks, why did the characters introduced in Bloodlines fail to take off? Was that group too edgy to take off? Right. So there was this story called Bloodlines. I mean, everybody knows that the only way to take off is by edgy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You got to edgy as much as you can, and I, then you can finally take I gotta off. I got to say, I'm a little bit impressed by your burgeoning superpower of, like, making everything sexual. Um, oh, Dow so, Dog. <laughs> so... Bloodlines was this story where basically these aliens were coming to Earth and they like fed on people's spinal fluid or something oh. extreme. Like yeah, that. but what it did to some people is it activated their metagene and it basically created this like new generation of people with powers. A bunch of people got powers all at once. Um, most of them like they're one and done. So you never saw them again. Some of them show up in a lot of stories. Like they kind of made it, but then. They're not really around now, but yeah. they made it further. So the one that probably made it the furthest is Hitman. Uh, he gained the power of telepathy and x-ray vision, uh, and he was a Hitman. Mm-hmm. Uh, so his name was Hitman. Obviously. Uh, there was a guy named Gunfire who could 
uh, he could explosively convert matter to energy. So he could basically make anything into a projectile. Oh, wow. Turn anything into a gun, essentially. Um, there's also ones that like barely showed up uh, in things. Uh, here's one that sounds super uh, problematic. Oh, okay. This one's name was Mongrel. Okay. He was a dark force blasting African American oh, Vietnamese no. hero. Oh god. Uh, that debuted in in Hawkman. Um yeah, you got a character like you got uh this one's named Shadow Strike, but with a Y instead of an I. Okay. Just says tragic hero, dark force energy. You know what I mean? Like it's a lot of this sort of shit. Uh, oh yeah, there's a surfer dude uh named Jam that was part of the Legion of Superheroes. <laughs> uh some stuff like that, basically. Most of these, yeah, they didn't last. I think because, I, I mean, partly so many of them were born in that tone that as soon as that tone didn't fit anymore, they didn't have a place in the world. Oh, okay. You know, it was one thing to darkify characters that had already survived a bunch of changes, but I think some of these ones where it's like, trench coats will never go out of style. And then it was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> Um, I think there's an element of that. I think it's also the element that many of these were so hyper violent that you could only see them as heroes maybe during this era. Oh wow! You know, like, and they didn't they didn't have enough backstory or like the problem was that you couldn't make them like a Punisher or Wolverine or something like that because they we already know what their origin was. Their powers all happened at the same time. It wasn't like, oh, I got my powers when I lost control and I, you know, and my family died or whatever. Like, it was irrelevant. Like, normally you need some sort of marriage of what is your powers and what is your origin. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean it has to happen at the same time, but they have to be narratively connected or relevant or something like that. And I think for a lot of those Bloodlines characters, they weren't. It was just like, uh, a bunch of people with powers. Uh, what's your power? He's like, uh, everything's a gun. Uh, it was just like, it's not necessarily a bad power. That's better than every dial doc we've ever done. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think they found their niche was the problem. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, new characters come along and they do find a bit of, I would argue that Silencer, uh, sort of post uh, Dark Knight's Metal, Silencer is a character that has a bit of a niche. Given more time and more uh, appearances, a character like Sideways, I think, has a niche. Booster Gold appeared post-Crisis. First new character introduced after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Totally gained traction. You know, Dr. Dr. Light, Dr. Kim Yohoshi, introduced during Crisis. She gained traction. You know, she was a very unlikable character and then yeah. became likable over time. Like, it's it's not that there's only one way to do it or that it never works or anything like that. But in this particular instance, it just didn't take. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's go to the next question, which means that we are leaving Twitter and heading on over to Instagram. Now we're going to Instagram. Take some questions and answer them. Check it. Check it. Check it. You had real like Jake Peralta vibes there. Yeah. It's that like. Yeah. It's the head bobbing, the yeah. white eyes. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from the one and only, the definitely not fake, the real Josh Gill. Ah, uh, sexy Gill. Oh, Gill.com. Uh, Gill to the brim. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Hub. <laughs> oh, give me every inch. Fill me to the gills. With your questions. <laughs> I can't believe that they said we had crude humor. <laughs> By the way, Josh, saw that deadlift. Oh, boy. I mean, I did, did my own deadlift when I saw that. I want to know what the timeline is for you doing the deadlift that Half Thor Bjornsson did. The, uh, like, 1,105-pound deadlift oh. <laughs> that he did. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need to see a video of that. Yeah. You know, to, for, for, for proof. Yeah. Yeah, Pixar didn't happen. <laughs> uh, Josh asks, not counting Death of Superman slash Doomsday and Nightfall slash Bane, what was the best story and best character to come out of the Dark Age? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. 
That's tough. Um, I mean, the, the the premise of this question is that those stories introduced a new adversary, and then that adversary actually like caught on, right? Like Doomsday and Bane, respectively, became big staples of the rogues galleries of their their heroes. But for a lot of other characters, I would argue that their good stories don't necessarily coincide with introducing a new character i mean obviously you could say like emerald twilight and then you get kyle rayner but kyle rayner is like not in emerald twilight yeah he shows up at the end i mean you get a little shot of him near the beginning of it and then a shot at the end where he gets a ring and they're like you're the last one there's no instruction manual bye <laughs> it's not the same as like it's not like that was the adversary the whole time or something like that um i i mean i brought it up before i really like the Hawk and Dove series of that era. So the original Dove, Don Hall, uh, D-O-N, uh, Hank's brother, died during Crisis on Infinite Earths. He dies in Crisis number 12. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then that series, he uh, he's just Hawk on his own, and he's getting angrier and more violent because he's mm-hmm. this like avatar of war, and he doesn't have an avatar of peace. And you discover that a new one has been chosen. Her name is Don Granger, D-A-W-N. Uh, uh, Don and Don. Yes. So they become the new Hawk and, and Dove. But you introduce like more of the mythos of Hawk and Dove because there's a character called Kestrel in there who is another one of these like bird characters sort of empowered by the, like the Lords of Order Chaos. Uh, he's violent and he's trying to take the power from other people. Yeah. I kind of like Kestrel. I wouldn't say that he like super stuck around as a character or anything like that, but the idea of other bird themed avatars of the Lords of Order and Chaos did. There's characters uh, over time. You you see Osprey, Condor, Swan. Uh, there's a, like there's a few. So what that series did do is sort of open up like what that mythos was, sort of in like a miniature way with like what they did with Lantern Corps, that every color has one. It was like, listen, there's a bunch of bird fucking people that have similar <laughs> powers. It's like a not as good of a version, but there's something I kind of like about it. I mean, yeah. anytime you're deepening the lore, I'm in. Oh, yeah. Daddy love lore. It's a lore uh, daddy yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. You can call me a laddie. Lore daddy. You can see our new lore, <laughs> laddie lore daddy t-shirts online. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's make Lord Daddy t-shirts. Yeah. yeah. It's just a picture of Brent Spider. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Uh, so I like that idea. It's that's sort of cheating the question a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, the I've already said, I think one of the best characters to come out of this era in general, Booster Gold. Yeah. Um, I also, I mean, this is an evolution for the character. Baby. But Hal Jordan as the Spectre is like one of the best things that happened. And it owes its it owes everything to the events of this era, right? Everything that happened to Hal before Emerald Twilight, during Emerald Twilight, afterwards, during Zero Hour as Parallax, where he tries to rewrite all of history. Yeah. Everything that happens during Final Night, where he redeems himself by like sacrificing himself to restart the sun. That all leads to Hal Jordan becoming the Spectre, and that's one of the best versions of the Spectre. Best runs. It's Hal trying to seek redemption while acting as an agent of vengeance. He's like literally pitting his will against the will of God Jesus. to try and like alter the Spectre's mission. I mean, it's it's incredible. I, so if we count that, I'd say that like the sort of just general Hal arc is amazing. But yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next question comes from the senator, son of Paul, James Paulson. James Paulson, who asks, "The Dark Age of Comics is well known for the crazy costumes that came out of it. What ones did you like the most? Which ones were the worst?" And are there any you wish had become the new normal? Ooh, uh, that third part is is tricky. So uh, let's start with worst, because that's the easiest one. Yeah. You don't like the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern. No. With the white and the big chunky mask. I fucking and hate the it. Gauntlets. I can't stuff. stand it. Yeah. That's the worst. Uh, obviously, Jared Stevens' fate. 
we have to throw that one in there yeah. where he melts down the helmet of fate. He has the onk tattoo on his face. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a, again, very one extreme. Of, taking one of the of. coolest costumes in DC and making it one of the worst. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Fate's costume is boss as yeah. shit. And uh, yeah, it's true. It, making it horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, those, those are definitely on the worst side of things. Uh, I think you can make an argument for, oh, God. I think you can make an argument for the Nightfall, like the Azrael Batman yeah. suit. Uh, I don't hate the long-eared Batman suit, though. I don't yeah. either. Um, best costumes of the era. Um. I'm. I think. Uh, I think where they where they. I mean, it's not a huge difference, of course, but Wally's flash uniform is slightly different. Mm-hmm. But just little tweaks of a classic look. Yeah, looks great. But again, that's very like you're not doing a ton of work there. No. Um. During the dark age, I mean, awesome costume. You got to give credit to the design of like morpheus of like uh sandman of dream yeah you know both with that kind of weird ass fucking helmet that he has but also just in general the cloak and the sort of goth look all of the endless basically i would throw in as like awesome designs really really cool they definitely make me take the red pill (gasps) stop trying to hit me and hit me (laughs) um yeah uh i would definitely throw all of the endless in there for like best designs designs that i wish stuck around i mean a lot of the ones that i like aren't necessarily gone uh i i wouldn't hate the batman thing the long ears i kind of love it bring the bring the long ears yeah. or he would have kept them around yeah yeah, yeah. cuz i think the little stubby ears especially are like sort of out of place and just feels like because yeah. I'm a fucking bat, I guess. I'll just put the little nubs on there. But that, like, it feels, like, menacing. There's a part of me that feels like, now that he's a dad, I think we could justify a long-haired Superman again. Oh, yeah. You know, I think for a bit, it 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 made sense, I think, when it happened, when he returned. And then it didn't make sense for a bit. Yeah. But he's a dad now, and, you know, he's probably having a bit of a life crisis. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, and he's Clark. He's not going to have a life crisis and go cheat on Lois or anything, but he'll grow his hair out. Maybe put I a think little... we could get long-haired Superman I could back. see him going granola really easily. Oh, Like right, man yeah, bun, yeah. like... Yeah. Oh, like, you mean, like, hipster version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could yeah. totally see him doing that. He yeah. seems like the type. Man bun, uh, like a quaffed beard uh yeah 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 i could see that i think that's fair that's reasonable. only shops at whole foods yeah i mean i guess you could say that the night the nightwing outfit because nightwing's outfit pre this era was that sort of disco we suit I, maybe the best design of them all yeah is the black like skin tight with the blue just yeah the blue that's line. My, that night the most design iconic. is is incredible yeah. it's perfect it's really it's a perfect costume yeah for sure and every variation of it afterwards is like fine but it's like diluting a bit of what it was yeah, it's it's never been better than just it so yeah. much impact on that i mean weird ones are like they were always weird, but the Huntress, I feel like in the 90s, especially because the 90s was all about like, how can they pose so that both their tits and their ass are facing <laughs> us? Huntress's costume with the weird just cut out of only the belly like rectangle. Yes. That's a weird. That's a weird one. Uh, I, you can't owe that design 100% to that era, but it's just, it's weird. It, it never sat well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that's, I think that's it. Nightwing, I'm going to say his best one. Awesome. Best one. Uh, all right. Uh, let's leave Instagram and head on over to Reddit. Uh, where everyone's nice and no one's ever mean. At least to us. Uh, which we have a question come from Pablo Acosta. You know, it's Pablo Acosta's island where they were trying to hold Fire Festival. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I've been to that island. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah my... It's a real shit <laughs> Like, uh, literally, the people that were digging shitholes because they were stranded on that island. 
yeah, uh, the creator of Simpsons took me to that island, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Was he caught up in all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. Grading? Yeah, yeah. He's an Epstein? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's awful. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that. Luckily, he has so little to do with Simpsons anymore that I'm not too concerned. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, 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 for sure. Bunch of fucking monsters. I know. Uh, I mean, it's all these guys who could like never, like these trolls who always have to like use their money to be able to get anything. Yeah. Still though, like just use your money like a normal person and be like a kind, compassionate contributor to the (laughs) sex work industry. Not a fucking predator. (laughs) It's not that hard. (laughs) Right? Uh, All right. Pablo asks, what was the most extreme stuff to happen to a hero? Uh, Would that be Hal Jordan? His whole city was destroyed? I mean, that's certainly up there. Yeah, uh, destruction of Coast City by Cyborg Superman and Mongol is... But maybe not the most extreme thing. Yeah, most extreme has to be... uh, Refrigerator? It has to be Alex. Yeah, Kyle Rayner's partner gets folded up and put in a refrigerator and killed by major force was ex- was was created just for that purpose well and that's the yeah i i mean i guess that's both an extreme thing to happen to her and it was also meant to be an extreme thing to happen to kyle rayner specifically it was all meant to happen to kyle rayner which is the problem with it is yeah. that alex is the prop yeah um but i mean that's pretty extreme but also killing some children on christmas is pretty extreme what the Lobo one? Yeah, that's ah, Lobo though. You bastard, lovable scamp. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Aquaman getting his hand like eaten by piranhas is pretty it's extreme. Fucking metal. Charybdis basically like takes Aquaman's power away from him for a bit, so he can't stop them. And he like holds his hand in the piranha water, and it comes out. And it's like literally bone. He has like Jesus. just a skeleton hand, and then for a bit, he just like wraps. Sort of goes around the stump and jams a hook into it, Ugh. and then he finally, eventually, gets like a cybernetic hook from Star Labs. But like, there's a bit there where he's just like jammed a fish hook into his oh, stump. Oh god, that's pretty extreme. Yeah, god, that's um, uncomfortable to think about. Yeah, interesting. I'm trying to remember if this, if it's during this era where Batman experiments with Venom. Not, not uh, I was that. like uh, Eddie. <laughs> not not that one. Uh, but like like the the drug that Bane uses. There's a, there's a story that might not have been canon, but is now maybe sometimes referenced, possibly canon. Yeah, where Batman. Hello, takes, Batman. It's basically Batman going through withdrawal from this like insane like super steroid. That must have been during this era. Batman, you're like a turd in the wind. Like a turd in the wind. That movie has no business being anything other than horrible. It's sort of impressive that it's like, it's fine. I would even say good. I wouldn't say it's good. I would say it's that. It's not great. And it's certainly not like, like amazing. It's certainly not. A, I didn't watch that movie of- and walk away and go, that was a good movie. That remind it reminded me of like they tried to remake like an early two thousands like Spider Man movie. Yeah, it feels like a sequel to that those series. I like don't, I don't hate it. I I can't. And they're getting a sequel. Oh, you that movie made like nine hundred million dollars. It might even get to go. It, they Spider Man might even get to like interact with oh, that yeah. character. That's ridiculous. Well, yeah, and they got uh, Woody Harrelson in that crazy wig. Jesus, there's Christ. gonna be carnage. God. Woody, Woody loves a wig. He he, he just loves to play dress up. He loves it so much. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. uh, let's go to the last question, which means we're leaving Reddit and heading right over to Patreon. Hey, cha ching! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Payday, baby. Uh, and the most important question comes from Richard Waltmoth. <gasps> Waltmoth. Waltmoth. Uh, it's Waltmoth means. Uh, uh, it's uh, Heisenberg. It's like uh, a Jew plus. Uh, it's Walt Math. Oh God, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh <laughs> no! Please no! 
I mean, Mickey is predominantly black and red and white. We all know that color scheme. <laughs> yep. Mickey Mouse has a jacket designed by Hugo Buss. <laughs> and he only drinks Fanta? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Disney World only serves Fanta. It's weird. <laughs> With black and white and red all over. Oh, only the good way. <laughs> uh, uh, Richard asks... Uh, what are some gems that didn't last from this era? What are some that maybe shouldn't have lasted but did? Um, I mean, Hitman probably went further than he should have. That yeah. Bloodlines thing, I think, should have just kind of died on sight, pretty much. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, gems. I think. Oh, I believe in some purest bloodlines oh no i think gems from that era is like everything that happened with like reign of the superman is pretty impressive we we, we get introduced to con l a brand new superboy previous to that story superboy was just referring to superman when he was a teenager and was being a superhero yeah this was the first time we had like a superboy that was someone else and his story and how he's you know, he was he had this leather jacket, he was this cool kid, it's like I'm I don't need to take no guff. But then he also like he discovers that he's a clone. He discovers that he's his fathers are Superman and Lex Luthor. Yes. He becomes like one of the most interesting characters of the Superman family, of the Titans family, of Young Justice. Uh he really grows into a very special, unique character. That is a hundred percent a gem that we owe to that era. Um, I think the general expansion and sort of crossover of some villains. So the idea of Cyborg Superman teaming up with Mongol and that, and these characters sort of cross pollinating the Superman Green Lantern kind of villains. Eventually that leads to Cyborg Superman being the grandmaster of the, uh, uh, Manhunter robots. Yep. It leads to him being part of the Sinestro Corps. It leads to, I think more cosmic, more interesting things. Like, I think they had run their course eventually with Cyborg Superman and Superman's yeah. rivalry. They're always going to come back to that, but it was more interesting to give them something else, right? Something more cosmic. That we owe to that era. Uh, the explosion of the Bat family. We get, you know, uh, I'm, I might be slightly fudging numbers here. We might be creeping into the early 2000s here, but we get the addition of uh Azrael of Tim Drake mm -hmm. of Stephanie Brown of uh, uh, uh of Bane of uh a bunch of characters we get eventually when it crosses over from the cartoon we get Harley we get a new Mr. Freeze origin we get like real hallmarks staples of the batman mythos all come from this era i mean it's easy for us to shit on things like how things look or like how edgy they were trying to be but of course it's like it's like almost two decade span of time it didn't not contribute something and we're not even talking about the biggest pieces of it which were some of these elseworld mm -hmm. uh stories and things like the dark knight returns like one of the most seminal graphic novels yeah. of all time it's not to say that it's watertight watchman fuck yeah <laughs> falls right in this era right like um uh, uh yeah of course uh, sandman neil gaiman sandman uh there's a bunch of stuff that is iconic seminal uh you know vertigo comics just as an entity you know all of these things yeah. happen from this era those are all gems and they they do grow and evolve and you know, like Peter Milligan's Shade the Changing Man is such like a interesting sort of psychedelic kind of uh, uh, trip. You get uh, James Robinson's Starman series. As a, uh, you get the, the introdu introduction of Jack Knight. You want to talk about a superhero costume that doesn't want to be a superhero costume. It's a guy in a shirt and an open button down uh, shirt uh, with goggles on who refuses to wear the traditional cape and cowl of his two predecessors. Um, but like, like Adam Strange, Jesus. <laughs> but that that like Starman series is uh, incredible, and it delves into stuff with the Justice Society and yeah. like, I mean, I I love that Starman series too. So that I would throw at the top of my list. There's a ton of gems from that era, though. It would be a mistake to think that like anything from this era is a write off because a lot of what we consider to be the best, <laughs> whether or not that's true, 
comes from this era. Wow. Your Watchmen's, your Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah. Your, like I said, Starman, even this Death of Superman. That's crazy. Big pieces all come from this era. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's the last question, which you know what that means. I do indeed. It's time for the Dial Doc. Wow. Yeah, that's true. I don't, I don't know what that was. But. Dial H for Hero, uh, mm-hmm. where uh, you get the magic H dial. You type in hero or evil. And you become a never-before-seen hero or villain uh, with crazy powers and a wacky name in every episode. Everyone. Until we fucking die. <laughs> Uh, well, hashtag we, sweet release. Uh, <laughs> we come up with new characters to add to the hero verse. That's right, baby. Uh, do you have one? I do. Oh, okay. I All do, right. I do. My character's name today is Erectile. Oh, no. I can already picture this. Uh, is it just basically like a lizard with a huge penis? That's ridiculous. Okay. No. It's uh, it, it's it's a, a person who has the ability to make any structure but completely out of tile. <laughs> <laughs> the... Can he generate the tile, or does like does he need to actually get the supplies? Yeah, no, he has to have be brought he in the could supplies. Just, he can, but he can just make it structurally sound. Yeah, yeah. But he he still has to buy. Yeah, the, yeah. Like it, the grout yeah. and the <laughs> shit, like yeah. <laughs> erectile. Which is really sad because when he runs out of that that stuff, it's a erectile dysfunction. Oh fuck you, <laughs> son of a bitch. Uh, it's definitely funnier than I wanted it to be. Uh, okay. What's yours? Mine is called Lawn Grower. <laughs> oh my god. And what Lawn Grower can do... Can I take a guess? Go for it. Can you grow grass? How dare you. There's more than one type of lawn. You can do grass, you can do clover. <laughs> Uh, basically, whatever your lawn is, uh, and I could really use him right now. Basically, what lawn grower could do is he could take like he has sort of like like Jesus with the fish powers. Yeah, where okay. He could take like a little piece of sod and just make as much. Oh man, as much like lawn as you God, need. That... So if he had like a a little piece of it, he could like like unfurl it and he could like cover like an army God. in like sod which you know they yeah they might be able to bust out but it would also it would trap them it would encumber them he can make the grass grow really like tall and weedy so that it's tough for them to move through so yeah that's that's lawn grower and his villain is the landscaper <laughs> oh my god <laughs> not like this <laughs> the land scalper yeah oh that oh oh yeah the lamb scalper. He. Uh, this is for. I'm just going to throw another one out there because I'm feeling the hubris. Oh, okay. The lamb scalper basically has the power to scalp sheep. Cool. Yeah. yeah. You mean like cut off their head, like the the skin off their head? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not 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 like shearing them, but no. Like... He's just actually scalping <laughs> sheep. <laughs> but he can only do it to sheep. You try and give him a goat, it's not going to work. It's going to be a, a big fucking mess. Wow. It's not going to be good. Yikes. No. Like, he'll try. Would you? He could you say that it would it. be? bad (laughs) (laughs) yeah let's just say that uh he's no bleating heart liberal (laughs) Uh, (laughs) i hope wow what a lamb chop I mean, I don't want to be sheepish, but I think that's a pretty big that was a pretty good dial back that was great oh my god Wow, what a what an unbelievable one that was! Yeah. Talk about a silence of the lambs, jeez. Uh, <laughs> we would love to hear what characters you residents could come up with. Send us your dial docs until the end of time to our various social media platforms, or you can send us a question for next week's episode. Listen, let's just take a little time here because next week is Fanagar. Fanagar. This is our fan appreciation month. It's always appreciate you, girl. Yeah, we're going to sing a song about it. Ooh, baby, I love you so much. Join the Patreon and give us your cash. 
<laughs> so for Fanagar, uh, a couple of things that we do every year. So next week's episode is Fight Night. So all you have to do ding, is ding. all you have to do is <laughs> submit your fighter. You don't submit who they're fighting against. Fight. You just submit who your, do you who do you want character. to go to battle? Choose your gladiator. That's right. Choose your gladiator. Uh, uh, so that is coming. Uh, we've got uh, a whole week's worth of episodes in the middle of oh, yeah. Fanagar this year, which Stuck is something in the special. Middle of June. Uh, we've got the. Oh, that was good. <laughs> uh, we've got annual number three is coming. Uh, oh yeah, three years, baby. Be a lot of fun stuff. Please put there. us out of our misery. Uh, during uh, June, you will see on Twitter the Fanagar Tournament of Pandering. This, of course, helps yes. determine what the final episode of the month is about. We might have a little tournament um, even go on through Patreon. Well, yeah. So basically, the we'll do the tournament, but the first 16 teams eliminated, they're going to head over to Patreon for a little last chance kitchen action. Yes. Uh, and uh, the two winners from the Patreon tournament will rejoin the final. Winner, Ganyo. Um, uh, and over on Patreon, I know what you're thinking. If the tournament determines what the final episode is about, what do we get? But for you Golden oh, Age patrons, worry. you still get to pick an episode uh, uh, for uh, for uh, the month. There's all sorts of crazy stuff happening. We might even there. have a tournament just for what goes on Patreon. And yeah, there's just going to be a little uh, couple of uh, special votes for what's happening on Patreon. Plus, patrons... Uh, there's going to be a contest. There's stuff you could potentially win. If you aren't on Patreon, this is a good time to do it because there's so much stuff happening during June. It's a real fun time. Yeah. Get your get your insurance by going on our Patreon. That's right. You get your health insurance to get the most from the doctor. Yeah. Just uh, uh, Patreon does not provide health insurance. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. for, yeah, for th- next, Think of it as your copay. For next week, at least, uh, send in your fighters for the fight night episode. Fight. Finish him. Let them fight. <laughs> uh, all you have to do is reach out through our various social media platforms, such as our Facebook. Dr. DC Podcast. Twitter. At Dr. DC. Instagram. Dr. DC Podcast. Email. Dr. DC Podcast at gmail.com. Yo, we got this subreddit. R slash doctor underscore DC. Yo, that's so good, you know? Uh, it's on the edge, but it's not there. It was uh, so close to Cage of Wolverine. Oh, yeah. You like oh, that? You go to that, that subreddit. Oh, go to that snake the snake the yeah, More like a swamp reddit if you were going where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, the dark phone is now open, no? <laughs> 208 917 It's 208 DZU. <laughs> uh, and of course, you have that website, baby. DrDCPodcast.com or .ca. All are welcome. That's right. Uh, you know what we would love from you, though? We're giving you so much free content. You know what you can give us? Uh, you know what you can give us? Josh. Josh. If you give up Josh, if you <laughs> give up his location, we will provide you with additional content. That's right. Maybe even some video content of us and Josh. Yeah, once we uh, get him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so threatening. <laughs> It's so threatening. God. If anything ever happens to Josh, even if it has nothing to do with oh us. Oh, my God. I mean. We're, we're initially, if, we're like so quickly perfect, going to jail. The perfect crime to commit would just be to kill Josh. Yeah. Because we're going to jail. all the evidence. Yeah, it's bad. It's like Dean with the shape uh, shifter. That's right. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. 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 That's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, you know, you uh, guys should be careful there, Josh. Sorry, uh, I cut you off, though. Uh, what, can, what can they do? They can give us five stars. Oh, my God. Give us those reviews. We talked about it off the top. So many places. At uh, at 100, we do the Lord of the Lord of the Rings miniseries. And more at, importantly. At 200, yeah. we start a brand new podcast. A whole other podcast. Uh, Supernatural Rewatch podcast, of course. Anything to escape um, our families. Yeah, so you can put those reviews up on any of those sort of podcatchers. Put it in comments. Make sure you send a picture to us because we don't always see them. Or, uh, or if you go to another subreddit and you post about us, that counts double. That yeah. counts as two. Oh, yeah. There's a there's the DC subreddits. There are uh, podcast subreddits. Yeah. There are like general nerd. There are subreddits. completely unrelated subreddits. Oh, but yeah, it does not matter. Yeah, 
Yeah. Just as long watch as out, they hash, watch out r slash earth porn. Yeah, they just need to get posted. Those administrators could be sons of bitches. You, you, you residents need to 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 thwart them as as much as possible. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and of course, if you want even more content, you're like, I'm I'm getting those reviews as quick, quick as I can, but you know, two hundreds a really long way away. Yeah. Don't worry, because we're producing more content every single week. All you need to do. Give us your money. Patreon.com slash Dr. DC. There's the $5 level, the Silver Only Age. You get the double month. dose. It's a full Who bonus. Who cares about some week. like child in another country you don't know about? Oh, Use your $5 on, right. somewhere else. Somewhere oh. that's going to give back to you. Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> For real, though. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. I'll and, deal with the child. I'm trying to get adopted kid. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And the Golden Age level, $7 a month. Honestly. You get all of those double dose episodes. Plus, you get video yeah. episodes every week. You get to vote on themes. You get uh, sort of like all sorts of fun stuff. And of course, during Fanagar, all sorts of crazy stuff oh, is happening. Oh, so much. Uh, so, uh, yeah, head on over there. And then, of course, do you want to watch us uh, play some scary oh, video games? you know you games? want to watch us. Go over to YouTube. Check out Scaredy Guys. You fucking video game cuck. You want to watch us watch, play a video game? We're not playing their video game, though. I mean, They're it could not... be. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, if you can't beat a level on your own, if you need a real man yeah. to come <laughs> beat a level for you. We're not those guys. Video game cuck. <laughs> That's it for this week. Adios. Ciao, ciao. This was a Brain Freeze podcast.